bags. They're basically the black holes of the clutter world, sucking in everything around them. And before you know it, you're basically carrying around a whole heavy universe. But despite the fact that you've got everything in there, you can never seem to find anything. So let's clear it out and talk about some ways that you can stop it from breaking your back. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and today we are tackling whatever bag you use most often, whether that be a briefcase, a baby changing bag, a backpack, or just a wallet slash purse. It is day 11 of the Clutter Free in 5 challenge designed to help you declutter and organize small spaces that will have a big impact on your daily life and all in just five minutes. Be sure to subscribe if you want to follow along. Now this one should be pretty quick so I also want to give you lots of tips on how you can actually keep your bag nice and light because I know that you don't want to have to empty it out on a regular basis. You've just come home from work, you've just come back from the playground or from college or the shops and the last thing you will want to do is sit down and empty out the contents and go through them. So stick around because I am not just about the quick fixes, I really want you to get last results. You know the drill, set a timer for five minutes and let's get crack a -lackin. Now unless it is a wipe down surface, put a towel down first. There is probably going to be lots of dust and debris and random bits of stuff in your bag so you don't want to be emptying all that out onto your nice clean bed. I once found some fruit at the bottom of a bag and the only way I was able to identify it as fruit was because of the little sticker. It was not pleasant. Now <laughs> just tip everything out. Open up all the pockets, turn it upside down, give it a good shake and if you think you need to you can go through the pockets afterwards to make sure that nothing got stuck in there. Or like my piece of fruit had basically become one with the lining of the bag. Yeah, I had to throw that one away. Same thing if it is a purse or wallet, but you may need to actually like physically manually remove the cards. Now look at all of that stuff that you have been carrying around with you. I mean, who needs a gym membership when you've basically got a weight strapped to your back or your shoulder? This is where you really need to get ruthless. What are you willing to sacrifice your posture for? What are you willing to suffer neck and back pain for. And sure, yeah, all of those things on their own probably don't weigh that much, but when you add them all together somewhere, a chiropractor is rubbing his hands in glee. If it's not essential, out it goes. Also, if it's just getting in the way, out it goes. If you are always scrambling to find cash in between a big mound of receipts and expired coupons, that's probably a good indication that you need to pair back there. So is the thing more of a hindrance than a help? Okay, this next bit is going to make such a big difference. What is truly necessary for one trip? You only need to bring enough stuff to get you through until you can restock. So if you were going to be home later that day, there's no point in bringing a week's worth of stuff with you. And this one goes for small things like credit cards too. Don't stuff your wallet full of cards when really you only need one. Downsizing is where it's at. So let me give you a very quick example. Baby wipes. Those packs are big and bulky and let's face it, you're not going through a whole pack, no matter how bad the disaster, on one play date. So if you have to carry the bag for any length of time, then just pick out a few wipes and put them in a Ziploc bag. On you go. I actually always carry one or two baby wipes in a Ziploc bag in my wallet because you just never know when you'll need to clean up a mess or you'll like put your hand on something yucky or your kid will get covered in ice cream, all those little types of things. And I know it might sound like a bit of a hassle, but if you are carting that thing around with you all day, it is better to spend a few seconds just putting some wipes in a Ziploc bag or decanting some lotion into a little travel bottle than setting yourself up for a lifetime of agony. Now following on from that, what is something that you would have access to or could top up? while you were out. I used to make this mistake all the time when I went to conferences. I would always fill up my water bottle and then bring it with me, carry it around in my bag and I might have, you know, a camera in there and a notebook and things like that. And it just really started to weigh me down. 
until I got wise. <laughs> they have water fountains there. I did not need to be carrying around a full bottle of water with me all the time. So if you can top up or restock while you are out, there is no need to bring that stuff with you. Also, how much could you leave in your car or at your office desk? Do you really need to carry it with you at all times or do you just need it somewhere close by just in case you do need to access it? And here is something that not a lot of people talk about, if anyone. In fact, it's digitizing the contents of your bag. Are you carrying around stacks of paperwork when really you could scan that or access a digital copy? This used to be a big problem for me when I practiced law because I would have huge case papers and I realize now, looking back, I wish I had been this wise at the time, but I didn't need access to all of those papers all of the time. I could just have maybe snapped a quick picture on my phone, you know, spread out some papers, the most important ones, snapped a quick picture. And then when I was out and about, if I did need to reference a date or a fact or something like that, I could just scroll through those pictures rather than heaving around a big bulk of papers. Obviously there were some instances when I did need to have the physical copy, but think about whether you actually need the physical stack or whether a digital copy would do you just as well. Do you just need to reference that thing on occasion. Also, are you carrying around a thousand rewards cards when really you could use an app to, you know, scan them all in or even just snap pictures of the barcodes and then save them in a folder on your phone? My local libraries app has a section where it has like a digital version of my library card, so I never have to carry that anywhere. And those rewards cards are just so annoying. They're so bulky. There are so many of them. So I hardly carry any at all. Literally carry two with me at any given time. That's to the local grocery store and the local pharmacy. And I carried the teeny tiny versions, you know, the little key versions. Yeah, that's actually another really good tip. <laughs> don't carry the full version of the card if there is like a little key fob version. I don't keep them on my keys because I find that really annoying, but I just slip them into the card slots. It reduces the bulk significantly. Another one then, if you're a bookworm like me, are you carrying around a book with you? You could carry the ebook version on your phone. I know it's not ideal, particularly if you do prefer a physical book, but if you're just going to be carrying it because you might get a few snatched minutes here and there of reading, then really an ebook version will do just fine in those instances. Really be critical of everything you are carrying around. You are the one who has to look that around and you are the one who has to bear the consequences of that. There are people in the wild who are surviving with a stick and a piece of string. You can survive without a full case of makeup and a big bottle of perfume. Just leave a small stash in your office drawer or go get some samples and away you go. So you have removed the unessentials, you have figured out what you can downsize and now it is time to put the rest back. If you've still got a decent amount of stuff, then consider separating them and putting them into little pouches. Clear pouches are perfect for this because they help to keep everything contained, but you can still see the contents. But really anything you have on hand will do. A pencil case, an old makeup bag, etc. Put like with like and then put those things into pouches and not only will that eliminate things disappearing into the dark depths of your bag, but it will also make it so much easier when it comes time to switch bags. So instead of having to move everything one by one, I don't know why I'm doing this, you can just take out a pouch or two and transfer those much easier. And then because bags have such a habit of filling back up, try switching to a smaller bag. If we're honest with ourselves, the bigger the bag, the more we just stuff into it. If you limit the size of the container, you limit the size of the contents. Now, depending on how often you use your bag, how quickly it gets filled back up, you could just make a habit of going through it, doing a quick refresh every week or maybe even every month. If you're like me, who basically does not carry anything that does not fit in a pocket, you could probably go years without doing this. But it will just take a minute or two to get your bag back in tip-top shape. You're back. 
will thank you. Next up then is one of those categories that invariably expands and turns into a bit of a collection. I will be sharing my top tips for keeping your toiletries, cosmetics and medications in check, including a really great little trick for how you can easily spot when one of them has expired. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. Gharev mila maha Don't even know why I have all these bags really. <laughs>